Hello everyone and welcome back to the Hammered Corner. In today's video, we have a collecting milestone to show with you all today. Now just before we get into it, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe so you never miss a video here on the channel. It has been an excellent few months for me in terms of my numismatic collecting. I have managed to obtain a lovely George I shilling to complete my small numismatic milestone of obtaining an early milled shilling of George I, 2nd and 3rd. These are big beautiful pieces and George I is the hardest of the three, being less common and especially in higher grades, and because of this are more expensive to acquire one. I haven't included George IV or Victoria in this Hanoverian collection as they used the newer shilling design that was implemented in 1820, of which made them much smaller and more modern like, a design that I wasn't that excited by. I strongly believe that when collecting anything, be it coins, historical or anything that makes you happy, it is always a great idea to set a small collecting milestone. Milestones allow for the brain to gain a great sense of achievement when you finally reach it. Milestones in numismatic history could be obtaining a rare coin, type, or even setting a challenge to one day be able to identify coin types from, from specific coinages. This is a great way for you to record your progress too. Without these and the thrill of the chase, you may find your time collecting could die off a little bit, losing the enjoyment that you once held. Now I had three small milestones in my short time collecting, two achievable goals and one lifetime goal, but more on that in a future video. My goal was to obtain a very nice example of a shilling from George I, George II and George III. I knew that when it came to price and rarity I would have to work my way back from George III. Now George III's reign was the longest of the three, so his shillings are more widely available and don't cost as much in high grade. The coin you can see on screen was one I purchased at the very start of 2021 from a website called Penny Crown Coins, whose link will be in the description below. And this shilling cost me £50 inclusive of postage and packaging. This stunning piece sees the king facing right and has one of my favourite pieces of garments in any coin portrait. He has a wreath in his hair and a very unflattering double chin and I really think the Mad King should have spoken to the engraver on that one. A huge benefit to collecting early milled coins is that higher grade examples of this one will be considerably cheaper to high grade examples of hammered coins. So then we move down to George II. Now George II issued two types of portraits on his coinage, easily distinguishable between his young and old head. Now I do prefer the young head design, but obtaining one costs about two to three times as much. So I decided to pick up this coin for £40 from a friend on Facebook to admire and learn from. George now faces left, and as you can see on his shoulder, you can see a really cool hidden gem that looks to be a lion's face. And remarkably, it took me two months to actually see it, and now I have seen it, it's the first part I look for and I can't unsee it. This is something that really draws me to this design and is a great touch to add. George is also wearing the same robes and wreaths with a very unflattering chameleon look to his portrait. And finally, the latest and greatest coin in my trio in my opinion, my George I shilling from the South Sea Company. Now I knew this coin would have been the hardest and most expensive example compared to the others, but I waited patiently for the right example to come up for sale and thankfully the seller, Timothy James, allowed me to reserve it ready for my birthday last September. George was the first in the succession of the House Hanover, introducing the newly designed Hanoverian coat of arms on the reverse as well as a big change in legend, but a video covering George I will be coming very soon, so be sure to stay tuned for that one. Now remember at the beginning I mentioned how I would have to pay two to three times as much for a shilling of George I? Well this example cost me around £120 inclusive of postage which is extremely good for the condition of the coin. So it is lovely to finally have an example of the three before the coin has changed in 8020 and puts me on the right path to obtain a full monarch run from Athelstan all the way to Queen Victoria. So be sure to let me know down below what coins you have in your collection and whether you have completed the same milestone as me and how long it took you to achieve it. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and it's given you the spark you may have needed to pursue your own collecting milestones regardless of how big or small. I do have a very exciting Tudor milestone coming in the new year for you all, and that is my best and biggest yet. So thank you all for watching, and as always, keep collecting!